The honour of being the first into space was an illustrious one. Who would be the lucky man or woman who would make the trip of a lifetime and be the first person to journey into the stars? Ladies and gentlemen, the answer to that question is a chimp called Ham. And no, he didn't excel his peers and become the most ambitious and fulfilled astronaut ever, as far as we're aware, but he was selected to take part in a fateful trip beyond our world for a very special reason. This is Brain Spill, my name is Tank, and today we're talking about Ham the Space Chimp, the first humanoid ever to go into space. And I know you're wondering, why did we send a chimp into space and what happened to dear old Ham? This was very special indeed because whilst he wasn't the first animal into space, he was the closest thing to a human at the time that had ever blasted off to the stars. Before we jump in, if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to never miss an upload. Ham was born in July 1957 in French Cameroon and was captured by animal trappers and was sent to a rare bird farm in Miami, Florida. He was soon after purchased by the United States Air Force for the small sum of $457. That might be the best $457 they've ever spent. Ham was not the only chimp that was purchased, however, as they decided to gather together 40 chimpanzees, all to take part in this very special space program. Only the best would be selected for the job. Ham's journey to the stars was set for one reason and one reason only, his exceptional ability to follow instructions. NASA, in its infinite wisdom, surmised that if Ham could follow their commands when required, he could navigate the complexities of space travel. Over time, these chimpanzee cadets were whittled down ever so slowly until they reached their final candidate, Ham, the chimpanzee for the mission in hand. So, you might be asking, why were they doing this? Why not just send a human, and why a chimpanzee in the first place? Well, a NASA publication said, effectively, that they're normally quite docile animals, and being highly intelligent meant that they could somewhat mimic human behaviour the perfect precursor to when we would eventually join them. Aside from that, their organ placement is also similar to that of humans, so they could test lever-pulling exercises on board the spacecraft, or how something, or someone, would treat the weightlessness of space and re-entry into our atmosphere. So yeah, basically humans wanted to test this on chimpanzees before sending real humans up there. Animal testing, which has a few ethical questions around it, but it is what it is. And if you thought that was bad, the training regime is also pretty bad. The chimps were taught to pull levers in response to sound and light. If they reacted correctly within five seconds, they were rewarded with banana pellets. If not, they experienced a mild shock on the soles of their feet. Ham in his training was also exposed to simulated g-forces and microgravity to prepare them for spaceflight, meaning that hopefully he would be ready for whatever space threw at him. This whole thing was quite exciting. I mean, this was the first time we'd seen anything like this. And for an animal that is normally spending their entire life in a jungle or throwing their own feces at each other, this chimpanzee was being a space traveler. Ham was trained for 219 hours during a 15 month period. But after all of this, he was the one deemed ready for the job. On the 31st of January, 1961, Ham was secured in a Project Mercury mission designated MR2 craft, which was also known as the Mercury Redstone 2, which was launched from Cape Canaveral in Florida. Strapped into his seat, Ham was likely musing about bananas, stars, and the interstellar mystery of what laid ahead. In the silent expanse of space, no one can hear you scream. So yes, Ham's primary task was to pull levers as he was trained to do, in that NASA had cracked the code to universal motivation, the snacks, to which the chimp diligently did his job, pulled the levers when needed, and this peculiar game of Simon Says made sure that he could maneuver the spacecraft such as a normal astronaut would. A little part of me also thinks that's how we should probably treat actual astronauts. Don't give them the actual specialised technical training they need, just tell them to pull a lever and you'll get yourself a bottle of bourbon. Sounds pretty simple. As Ham orbited the Earth, he was subject to various monitoring sensors to have a constant check on his vital signs, 
such as his body temperature and respiration. Another fun fact about this whole thing is that Ham actually had a rectal thermal probe which was used to monitor all his vital signs. I didn't need to tell you that fact, but it's a fact. And we can both now walk away from this video with a little bit more knowledge about some of the first spacefarers and the probes that they had inside of them for their own safety. So, our dear Ham was doing well so far. He managed to get into space and was pulling the levers when he needed to. So what happened when he tried to re-enter Earth's atmosphere? Well, due to a valve malfunction, the Redstone rocket delivered thrust higher than intended, resulting in the emergency escape rocket to be triggered and jettisoning Ham to 14.7 Gs of speed during re-entry into our atmosphere. Ham's capsule re-entered Earth, landing in the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. Divers donned their wetsuits and swiftly descended to rescue the chimp, who by this point, nobody knew if he'd quite made it back in one piece. There's only so much training you can do for something like this, and who knows what would happen to this little chimp to see if he could make it on this miraculous journey all the way back down to planet Earth. The post-flight examination found a small abrasion on the bridge of Ham's nose. He was also a little bit dehydrated, but miraculously, he was completely fine, and was even gifted a nice shiny apple for his services to humankind. That is one tough chimp. Despite the fact that he was physically in good health, you could tell that with the amount of people around him at the time, he was probably quite nervous, so poor little guy. The total flight time was 16 minutes and 39 seconds in total, but this time was vital for scientists to make some remarkable discoveries, including the fact that Ham's lever-pushing performance in space was only a fraction of a second slower than on Earth, demonstrating that tasks could indeed be performed in space. Ham's triumphant return to Earth marked him as an overnight sensation. The world celebrated Ham as a spacefaring hero, the interstellar envoy who has not only ventured into the unknown, but did so for all of chimp kind and, of course, for the taste of delicious, delicious freeze-dried space bananas. Upon his re-entry into Earth, Ham would then spend the next 17 years of his life in the Washington DC Zoo as a real hero. And of course, he got a lot of bananas at the same time. Shortly after this, he would spend his retirement years in a small group of chimps at North Carolina Zoo, and he was moved on the 25th of September 1980. This story is pretty remarkable. I mean, for something which you think would go catastrophically wrong, surprisingly, it turned out all right. And this little chimpanzee, although he may not have known exactly what was going on, he was an important part in our future ventures into space. He was the precursor to humans blasting off into the stars. If you guys liked that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.